How to use the Godlike 4 mastering software. It might come as a surprise that the mastering of a well-mixed music doesn't require any special mastering software. All that is needed is a maximizer that increases the final volume of an audio to an amplitude level that meets today's expectations. Usually the process isn't as easy though. If the mixed music is full of mistakes and mixing the tracks is not possible, special softwares are necessary for professionals to rely on. Godlike is one of these softwares, designed according to today's expectations, full of functions that make correcting the mistakes as easy as possible. So what is Godlike, and how to use it properly? Oftentimes mixed music sounds dull without mastering. In these cases, equalizers are necessary. This step is also the one where the mastering professional selects the frequency ranges that are either too loud, or too quiet. This issue needs to be fixed. Inexperienced users often make their first mistake trying to correct these mistakes by raising the high and deep frequency range far too much. The music ends up sounding more robust hi-fi, but in reality, this is one of the worst possible choices to make. The human mind prefers linear sounds meaning that in the long run, too low or too high frequencies are tiring to listen to. The trick is to aim for a linear sound while using the equalizer. Godlike's Auto EQ function helps to create this linear sound. After turning on the effect, start the audio and then click the reset button. The effect detects which frequency ranges are too prominent or too weak during the real-time play, and automatically corrects the volume of the frequency range. It's recommended to start the audio at a more crowded part during the learning process where instruments play in most frequency ranges. Note that the software won't create a perfect linearity, the final correction is always done by the professional with the help of the graphic EQ. Sometimes even after adjusting the equalizer to the best possible setting, some frequency ranges still remain too prominent and can't be fixed without interfering with the overall effect. In these cases, multiband compressor is the function to turn to. The multiband compressor separates the full frequency range audible to humans to four different ranges. Let's see an example. If, between 750 Hz and 3500 Hz, there's a less than pleasant sound, the multiband compressor helps adjusting only that one frequency range, and leaves the rest untouched. Unlike the EQ, which adjusts everything within the range, the compressor corrects based on specific criteria. The compressor can be set to lower the volume of a frequency range only if the range tries to move beyond the allowed amplitude. The allowed value can be set using the threshold. The sense of space can be an issue with audio as well. If one's lucky, only a small correction is needed. In these cases, stereo imager should be used, a function that separates the whole frequency range into four parts as well. A more complicated way to increase the sense of space is switching the EQ from normal mode to mid-side mode. Using the functions of side EQ in this mode means the EQ can both increase and decrease the sense of space. This solution allows more precise adjusting, but it complicates the process if ideal settings have been set before. There's a possibility that some tones aren't located in the right place in the space. In these cases, the incorrect location can be fixed with the help of the side pan and the mid pan slider. solution can't fix the issue in all cases, but it can be really helpful in most situations. If these functions are set, the music can be further adjusted with the following effects. Multiband saturation. The whole frequency range is separated into four parts in this case as well.
digital signals are known to be sterile pregnant sounding, but sometimes people perceive random sound as more beautiful and natural. This effect changes the digital signal into analog. Most of the time there's no need to use this effect, only in more special cases should it will be considered, and even then it's important not to overuse it, as the more extreme values result in the opposite effect. As I mentioned with the EQ, less experienced users will try to increase the low and high frequency ranges to get hi-fi effect, instead of EQ, though, two virtualizer is the best option to use. The amplitude of the low frequency is louder than other frequencies. As the frequency decreases, amplitude increases. If, at the end of the mastering process, the user tries to increase the volume of the low frequencies using EQ, the maximizer can't be used to increase the volume of the music as much as they'd like, because the deep frequency range takes up the space, so to speak. Two virtualizer, on the other hand, help increasing the volume of the low frequency range in a way that still leaves a wider leeway for the maximizer. The two virtualizer helps create beautiful lows even for the most bland audio. The effect can also be used to increase the high frequencies. There aren't many plugins capable of this, which is why this function is recommended in almost every case. Using the maximizer means the user has reached the second to last stage of the mastering process. Increasing the volume means the dynamics of the audio decrease, which is obviously not ideal. At the same time, music with increased volume results in robust effect. Overly increasing the volume may mean louder music, but it also makes the sound more boring. Furthermore, the tolerance of some maximizers is lower than what is needed for proper mastering, and the music will start to be audibly distorted as the changes are applied. The most important advantage of godlike maximize is that audible distortion only happens in the most extreme cases. Luckily, nowadays loudness war happens within more reasonable limits, but it's still important to reach the highest possible average volume for today's music. Godlike 4 is great at this. One of the most important features of Godlike 4 is that it has two threshold functions. The two functions may seem the same, but they increase the volume in different ways. Threshold 1 slightly adjusts the sound of the high frequency in cases of more intense increases. The result might not be ideal for some audios. When it comes to electronic music, Threshold 2 slider is recommended. What to do in cases when the volume must be kept intact but the music loses dynamics as a result? The last step of godlike mastering is transient recovery that can increase the sense of dynamics without lowering the volume. In acoustics and audio, a transient is a high amplitude, short duration sound at the beginning of a waveform that occurs in phenomena such as musical sounds, noises or speech. It can sometimes contain a high degree of non-periodic components and a higher magnitude of high frequencies than the harmonic content of that sound. The effect finds the transients from the original signal with high efficiency and mixes them with the signal from the maximizer. The effect works so well that it results in incredible improvement. It's important to note that the effect shouldn't be unnecessarily overused, and it should only be allowed at the very end of the mastering process.